Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, good day to you, depending where you are in the world. It's our nighttime devotion. We're reading from the devotional Lift Him Up. The title today is To Be a Christian is to be Christ like. Psalm 24, 3 and 4. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that have clean hands and a pure heart. He who have not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. What is it to be a Christian? It is to be Christ-like. It is to do the works of Christ. Some fail on one point, some on another. Some are naturally impatient. Satan understands their weakness and manages to overcome them again and again. But let none be discouraged by this. Whenever little annoyances and trials arise, ask God in silent prayer to give you strength and grace to bear them patiently. There is a power in silence. Don't speak a word until you have sent up your petition to the God of heaven. If you will ask and always do this, you will soon overcome your hasty temper and you will have a little heaven here to go to heaven in. God wants his people to cleanse their hands and purify their hearts. Will it make them unhappy to do this? Will it bring unhappiness into their families if they are kind and patient, courteous and forbearing? Far from it. The kindness they manifest toward their families will be reflected upon themselves. This is the work that should be carried forward in the home. If the members of the family are not prepared to dwell in a peace there, they are not prepared to dwell in a family that shall gather around the great white throne. Sin always brings darkness and bondage, but right doing will bring peace and holy joy. In the day of affliction, when the enemy presses us, we shall walk among the angels. They will be like a wall of fire about us, and we shall one day walk with them in the city of God. There has never been a time when the people of God have had greater need to claim his promises than now. Let the hand of faith pass through the darkness. Grasp the arm of infinite power. While we speak of the necessity of separating from sin, remember that Christ came to our world to save sinners and that he is able to also save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. It's our privilege to believe that his blood is able to cleanse us from every spot and stain of sin. We must not limit the power of the Holy One of Israel. He wants us to come to him just as we are, sinful and polluted. His blood is efficacious. So I entreat you not to grieve his spirit by continuing in sin. If you fall under temptation, do not become discouraged. This promise comes ringing down along the line to our time. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Christ Jesus the righteous. I feel that for this one promise, a continual song of thanksgiving ought to go forth from the lips of mortals. Let us gather up these precious jewels of promise. And when Satan accuses us of our great sinfulness and attempts us to doubt the power of God to save, let us repeat the words of Christ. Him that cometh to me, 
I will in no wise cast out. As Jesus did say, no one comes to the Father except through me. And we need to fully understand that. To get to the Father, to be with the Father. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Christ Jesus the righteous. We cannot get to heaven. We cannot be with God. Unless we go through Jesus. Who essentially is God. In the day of affliction when the enemy presses us, which is happening right now, we shall walk among the angels. They will be like a wall of fire about us and we shall one day walk with them in the city of God. Trust God. Pray to him and that his, send his, he will send his angels to protect us. Trust him. That's all we can do.